Welcome to the first in this series of videos on the methods behind guidelines from the Technical Support Unit at the University of Bristol. I'll be taking you through what network matter analysis is, why it is useful, and when we might use it in NICE guidelines. In guidelines, we want to decide which treatment or intervention options are the most effective and cost effective for patients with a given condition. There are usually several treatment or intervention options under consideration that we want to compare. To measure effectiveness, we start by selecting a specific outcome, for example, depression score. We search for trials that looked at treatments for the outcome, and we combine this evidence on the treatment differences in a meta-analysis. Whilst randomized controlled trials typically compare two treatments at a time, we are interested in knowing all the treatment differences, including those between treatments that haven't been directly compared in a head-to-head -head trial. For example, here A and D have not been directly compared in a trial. However, we still need to compare them to inform our recommendations. For the comparison of treatments A and B with evidence from multiple trials, we can conduct a pairwise meta-analysis. A pairwise meta-analysis pulls the results from trials that directly compare treatments A and B. Pairwise meta-analysis takes the relative effect of treatment B compared to treatment A from each trial and combines them giving more weight to the larger studies, those with bigger squares, to give an overall effect. Pairwise meta-analysis is a powerful method for combining evidence from head-to-head -head trials on a single comparison, but it cannot compare several treatments and suggest the best. Network meta-analysis combines evidence from all trials to compare all treatments in an evidence network. This means that we can get treatment differences between A and B, or A and C, B and C, and so on. The treatment difference between any combination of treatments, even if they have not been directly compared in a trial. Suppose we have direct trial evidence comparing the treatments connected by solid lines. So here there is an A versus B trial, a B versus C trial, and so on. Network meta-analysis can be used to compare any pair of treatments, so long as we can follow a path of solid lines between them. Although there is no direct evidence comparing A and C, they are connected by the A versus B trial and the B versus C trial, so we can obtain an indirect estimate based on trial evidence. So how do we do this? We have evidence from trials of A versus B, and B versus C, and we want to know the effect of A versus C. We make the assumption that treatment effects are consistent, that if you add together the treatment effects of A versus B and B versus C, you will estimate the effect of A versus C. We then use the treatment difference we know to calculate the unknown treatment difference. As an example, if the outcome is depression, then we see that depression scores are reduced by four points on average with B compared with A, so B is a more effective treatment than A. Depression scores are reduced by two points on average with C compared with B, so C is a more effective treatment than B. When we add the treatment effects together, we estimate that depression scores are reduced by six points on average with treatment C, compared with the reference treatment A, and conclude that C is better than A. We can use the same process in a network of treatments. When we assume consistency, we can calculate the difference between A and C by summing all of the treatment differences on the path between them. The true treatment effects that we would see in a large study that included all the treatments must be consistent. However, the evidence that we have may not be consistent for a variety of reasons. 
inconsistency can arise when there are differences between studies that may change the relative treatment effects. For example, treatment B may have been given at a different dose in the A versus B study than in the B versus C study. When there is both direct and indirect evidence for a comparison, network meta-analysis pools both of these. Here, the direct B versus C evidence is combined with the indirect evidence shown in yellow. The NMA results can be presented for each treatment compared with a reference so that we can easily compare them. Here, B, C, D and E are compared to A for mortality. The treatment effect for B crosses the line of no effect, meaning we cannot say that treatment B reduces the risk of mortality compared with treatment A. Treatment D was more effective at reducing mortality than treatment C. Treatment E was the most effective at reducing mortality. We can also estimate which is predicted to be the most effective treatment and rank the treatments. Here treatment E has a high probability of being best and treatment B is unlikely to be best. On average, treatment E is ranked in place one and is very likely to be in the top three treatments. Treatment B is on average placed fourth and very likely to be in the bottom two treatments. Displaying this for each outcome allows you to assess outcomes in context. For example, there might be a treatment that is very effective but has a high rate of side effects. Effectiveness is, of course, only part of the picture. There is also the matter of cost effectiveness. The results from our networks estimate the rates and probabilities that, along with costs and other inputs, feed into the economic model. So we've seen that network meta-analysis uses all of the evidence, direct and indirect, to compare the treatments for an outcome. All treatments can be compared together and treatments can be ranked to find those most likely to be effective. Network meta-analysis also gives us estimates that can be used in econo economic models so that the cost effectiveness of the treatments can be compared. However, they are not a magic bullet. We can't estimate effects for treatments that are not connected to the network. Here, treatment F cannot be compared with the other treatments in the network on the right. Also, study populations need to be similar for the consistency assumption to hold. This is called exchangeability. If our study populations are too different in ways that may change the treatment effect, the network meta-analysis results may be misleading. Network meta-analysis allows us to compare any two treatments in a connected network, rank treatments by effectiveness, and use all of the evidence available. However, the outcomes measured in the studies need to be similar, for example, measured at similar time points. The treatments or interventions need to be similar in the studies that can include them, for example, similar doses of drugs or similar duration of counselling sessions. And our study populations need to be similar enough that we wouldn't expect different responses to treatments, for example, due to severity of the condition or past treatment history. Thank you.